Breaking news, the Pentagon is investigating a recent encounter on the U.S. side of our southern border where Mexican troops detained and disarmed two U.S. soldiers. The Mexican government and the Pentagon apparently looking into whether the U.S. troops acted appropriately. A NORTHCOM official almost excused the Mexican troops, saying it may have been difficult for those Mexican troops to know that they were actually on American soil. Wow. Well, acting DHS Secretary Kevin McAleenan doesn't seem to uh, always appreciate the full extent of uh, the priorities at the southern border. So DHS has a broad set of responsibilities, more than just the border, even though that remains a huge focus for us. I started my day here in New York City with cyber experts talking about uh, things that we could do to prepare for the 2020 election cycle, talking about our partnership with the private sector, state and local governments, and how we can enhance that. Uh, and really, we're laser focused on the 2020 preparation. The 2020 preparation obviously should, well, there should be reflected, one would think, some concern about the extraordinary impact of uh, illegal immigration, uh, which might be construed as Mexican interference in our elections as they permit uh, Mexican citizens and Central American citizens uh, to cross illegally into the United States. Here's how the acting secretary plans to handle the crisis. The two targeted changes we need the most are the ability to detain families together mm -hmm. through a fair and expeditious immigration proceeding. Uh, that's a few sentences of law. And secondly, the ability to have unaccompanied children who are being enticed into the smuggling cycle uh, from Central America, being able to repatriate them safely. And joining us tonight, Christian Whiten, senior fellow at the Center for the National Interest, former State Department senior advisor in both the Trump and Bush administrations. Uh, Christian, good to have you with us. Let, let's start with the, the foreign policy implications of this national emergency, the president has called, uh, and the importance of getting it right first in securing that border. Yeah, you know, I think between DHS and particularly the Pentagon, you have government agencies that really don't have their head in the game, particularly the Pentagon, which in many ways has never joined the Trump administration. You have these generals who love their expeditionary operations. They're out in Syria. We've been in Afghanistan for 18 mm -hmm. years, and we have a crisis on our own border. We have people right. invading our country, and I would think that should be pretty, pretty high up, priority one, two, three, somewhere there, and they seem completely oblivious. Oblivious as uh, is, uh, well, I shouldn't say that the, Demo the, the Democratic Party is oblivious. It is avoiding uh, its eyes from the crisis that is at hand. But it's not a crisis for the Democratic Party. Uh, it is the arrival of uh, highly targeted, highly prized and appreciated future voters for the uh, Democratic Party. It's right. And their judgment, you know, This is one thing. That's right. And we've seen this in Europe. We're seeing it here. And they, they are attempting to replace us with citizens that they think there are future citizens that they think would be more amenable to voting for mm -hmm. them. You know, if you look, actually, Latinos here legally, U.S. citizens, they're actually, frankly, very similar to native born Americans in their view of uh, people ought to wait in line. There ought to be the rule of law. We cannot have open borders. So I'm mm -hmm. not sure this is going to work out the way the Democrats expect, but that's what they're up to. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it will not, actually. Uh, there are no uh, ethnic or racial group is monolithic, uh, although sometimes they ap approach that. But the Hispanics are certainly far from monolithic, uh, supporting uh, Republicans uh, in all sorts of uh, elections across the country, local, state, uh, as well as the presidential elections. This president, his, uh, his approval rating among Hispanics has, uh, has really risen profoundly. Uh, so I think you're right. right to that point. Let me, uh, and again, why should it not be? We all have the same interest, our security, our, our, our prosperity, uh, and the future of our children. I, I mean, it's, it's not complicated, no matter how uh, people want to play group and identity politics. Let, let's turn to the president uh, now uh, absolutely asserting uh, absolute sanctions against Iran. Uh, and also that involves, of course, a number of our important allies. Uh, your thoughts about the importance of those sanctions and their effectiveness? 
All right, now this is Trump finally fulfilling all of the pledge he made. You know, it may be a little rough around the edges for the Wall Street Journal editorial page, but he said we're getting out of the Iran deal, cranking yeah. up sanctions. He did that in a measured way. He gave some waivers to countries, some friendly countries like Taiwan, some unfriendly countries like China, because he didn't want gas prices to go up too quickly here. But um, we have finally stopped issued waivers. If you're doing business with Iran oil, it's going to be bad. So, you know, going from 1.2 to 1.7 million barrels per day down to just a couple hundred thousand through smuggling that takes away two billion dollars per month from the Iranian regime so this is a, a pretty big deal we're not getting any help from our friends in Europe Britain Germany France working against us but their companies are going to comply because they'd rather do business with us than with Iran and then we you know may have to contend with some Chinese cheating but this is a big step you know I, I, James is a, a terrific fellow uh, he is uh, and smart as he can be but there is still this there is a pinch it among some uh, and particularly establishment folks, and uh, I, I think James wouldn't blanch at being called establishment, who, who want to talk about uh, rough edges. Uh, I didn't go to the same finishing school as James, so uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, and I've got so damn many rough edges. I will not <laughs> judge anyone else. Christian, it's great to see you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Christian White. Thank you, Lou.